Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new women's 2016 Nike Mercurial Superfly 4 in a very complex colorway. It features blue tint, bright mango, racer blue, hyper turquoise, bright crimson, and a little bit of metallic silver. So lots and lots of colors happening on one single shoe here. Inside the box, they do include a string bag. The string bag is gray in color with gray strings. You're gonna find a pink Nike swoosh on one side and your pink Nike football branding on the other. Other than that, all you're gonna find inside the box, as you guys can see, are the shoes themselves. So I'll get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at the 2016 women's colorway of the Nike Superfly 4. Now for those that follow kind of soccer shoe release news a little bit more closely, you may have seen these unveiled quite some time ago, but they're just now actually being released to the public. It was months ago when Nike first showed these off, but like I said, they're finally available. So if you are interested in a pair of these for yourself, First link down below, go ahead and check it out. It's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you will find Buy It Now links to pick these things up below their normal retail price with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, of course. So you won't pay the full $275 retail price. Now, being that this is a women's shoe, I know it's gonna confuse quite a few people. It's not women's fit, it's just a women's colorway. What does that mean? The actual fit and shape of the shoe is no different from the men's variation. The only thing that's different is the sizing and if you're a guy you actually can wear these things i'm going to explain the sizing a little bit later during the on feet portion of the video so if you want to know more about that stick around watch that part and everything will be explained because the conversion is actually pretty simple of course in today's video we will be focusing on the fit as well as the sizing differences between the men's and women's variation of the superfly 4 we're of course going to take a detailed look at the colorway talk tech specs as well take a look at the weight of this shoe so if you are interested in learning more please stick around watch the entire video and with that being said let's get right into the review to start things off let's take a closer look at the colorway which is interesting to say the least for me and this is just my opinion this looks like a nike id shoe in that it has so many different colors on it that i don't want to say don't work together but it's definitely an odd combination that at the end of the day honestly doesn't look all that bad it's just very different and everyone's going to have their own opinion on it i'm sure now being that this is a women's colorway i know a lot of people will automatically assume that only girls can wear these and that's not necessarily the case i think it's a tough argument nowadays to say that this is a girly looking shoe when there's been all pink men's colorways of the uh, superfly 4 uh, that people have purchased and worn without any issues at all. So to say that these are too girly for a guy to wear, I'm not necessarily gonna argue for that. Um, but again, everyone has their own opinion on that kind of thing. As far as this colorway is concerned, it's really cool in that it shows off the knitted aspect of the upper. You have a translucent Nike skin covering that covers up a combination of blue as well as like a very, very light gray for the actual fly knit material, which just looks really, really cool. Um, big, big fan of this particular combo. It's everything else that looks a little bit odd to me. You're of course going to find solid gray in the laces as well as the um, kind of exposed fly knit areas, both across the top of the foot as well as in the collar. The mid layer is a nice bright kind of royal blue color. So that's in the collar as well as above the laces here which is a nice little detail. You're gonna find that same royal blue color going across the top of the collar, as well as in the mercurial branding going down the back of the collar. The inside of the collar, for those that care, is also solid royal blue in color. You're going to find a bright mango swoosh on both the front and back of the shoe with a metallic silver outline. So it's kind of like a light orange, almost salmon-like color. And then moving on to the bottom of the shoe, you're going to find bright crimson orange, which is a slightly darker shade of orange for the actual stud plate. You find a blue tinted carbon fiber sole plate that we've seen on CR7 colorways of the Superfly 4. And then the actual studs themselves are that uh, hyper turquoise color. So it's kind of like a teal, um, turquoise kind of very very light greenish blue color um, at the tips of the studs that don't really go with anything else on the shoe but uh, they kind of went all out with going for different shades of oranges and blues and silvers and greens all on one single colorway so again let me know your opinions on it down below in the comment section I'm a big fan of the base color I think that the combination of gray and blue looks absolutely fantastic I like that it shows off the knitted aspect of it but all the other accent colors I can't say that I'm too crazy about but again let me know your opinions on on this particular shoe down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? 
why or why not. And with that being said, let's move on to the tech specs so we can learn a little bit more about the overall performance. As far as tech specs and performance goes, not to repeat myself too many times in the same video, but whether it's the men's or women's version of the Superfly 4, nothing is actually different about the shoes other than the way the sizing works. The shape, the materials, the construction, everything is identical aside from the colorway and like I said, the way the sizing works. Other than that, there is no difference whatsoever. So with this Women's Superfly 4, you're getting a regular Superfly 4. It features a flying and upper that's obviously more structured than all the areas covered in, fly, uh, in Nike skin, the main parts of the upper. Uh, the actual um, flying it material is on the thinner side, so it's gonna provide more of a barefoot sensation, but because it is a knitted material, it does have a slightly padded sensation as well. There is actually a playtest video of the Superfly 4 up on my channel. So if you guys wanna check that out, I'll leave an annotation on screen. You can go ahead and watch it if you haven't already. You're gonna find Brio cables that run from the base of the sole into the lacing system that act as one of the main structure elements in terms of keeping your foot locked in place and just giving the shoe a very responsive feel. You're also gonna find internal supports um, that you can't see, but definitely can feel on the inside of the shoe. That again, keep everything locked in place, especially through the midfoot, that give this shoe a surprisingly responsive feel, given how soft and natural the knitted upper actually feels in your hands. Laces run through the middle, as you guys can see. And then of course, through the middle of the shoe, as well as in the collar, you have exposed elasticated fly knit that really doesn't provide any structure. When you put it on, it's going to stretch out and then kind of compress back. So it's gonna give you more of a one-to-one -one sensation. But uh, uh, unlike what a lot of people think in regards to this mid-cut design, there's no performance advantage to it. It's there simply pro to provide a certain type of feel. There's no structure here. There's no extra support. There's no really extra protection other than a thin layer of material. So what this is here to do is just to provide a certain feel where it kind of feels like the shoe is flowing from your leg onto your foot as opposed to being strapped to your foot. Um, like I said, it's just a slightly different sensation from a traditional low-cut shoe that isn't necessarily better or worse. It's just a matter of preference and, of course, something that is both different in terms of feel as well as visually different, which I think is part of the reason why it is so popular. You have an internal plastic heel counter at the back of the shoe, a smooth synthetic leather liner on the inside with minimal amounts of padding. That's where people have the most issues with this particular shoe when they wear them for the first time. So I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later during the on-feet portion of the video as well, so stick around for that if you want some tips on how to break these things in. The insole is fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. It features a mesh liner on top, perforations throughout, and it's just a single layer of this gray foam. Nothing too fancy, but it does get the job done. And then moving on to the sole plate and stud pattern, the sole plate is, as you guys can see, made from carbon fiber, very flexible. Uh, while it's visually very cool looking, much cooler looking than the Mercurial Vapor 10, for example, it pretty much feels just like the Vapor 10 in terms of the thickness as well as flexibility. So I wouldn't say that there's really any major performance advantage uh, to the uh, carbon fiber sole plate versus uh, something that you will get with the um, Vapor 10 that obviously is a more traditional plastic construction. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, again, it's consistent across the entire Mercurial line. All bladed studs, both in the forefoot and heel. Very aggressive traction, uh, really designed around being multi-directional in terms of being uh, having that really good bite when pushing off in pretty much any direction. It's very aggressive. It digs in really nicely, but you never feel like you're locked in place either. On firm natural grass, it's one of the more aggressive stud patterns that you can get. And longtime fans of the Mercurial series, or really just anybody who wants an aggressive traction pattern, should not have any issues with the firm ground mercurial stud layout because like I said, it performs really, really well and definitely does get the job done. So that's pretty much it in terms of tech specs and what you should know regarding the performance of the Superfly 4. It has a lot going for it. It's a very unique shoe. Um, and if all of that kind of appeals to you, then you probably will enjoy your experience with this particular model from Nike. As far as weight is concerned, given the construction of the Women Superfly 4 being identical to that of the men's variation, there isn't a weight difference between the two. Like I said, the only difference is the sizing. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time. Keep in mind that this pair is a women's size 10.5 US, which is exactly the same size as a men's size 9 US. So we're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 6.9 ounces, which is the general range for a pair of Superfly 4s 
in between 6.9 and 7.2 is kind of what you can expect in this particular size depending on the colorway and that is of course the equivalent of 195 grams so right around the seven ounce mark that's kind of the ballpark for a pair of superfly fours in this particular size they're nice and lightweight on your feet they feel nice and solid and once broken in properly it's a surprisingly comfortable shoe as well so if you're looking for something nice and light you're definitely going to get that from the superfly four all right so here is a look at the women's superfly fours on feet on my left foot i have the stock gray laces that come with the shoes and on my right foot i have a pair of metallic silver reflective sr4u replacement laces if you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com you find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video now in terms of how these things fit and feel and what the sizing is like uh, it's pretty straightforward despite this being a women's shoe. The only difference between the men's and women's variation is the sizing, and it's a pretty simple conversion. I normally wear a men's size 9 US in the Superfly 4, and to go to women's, basically all you have to do is go up one and a half sizes. So going from a 9 US to a 10 and a half US women's is the exact equivalent, which is what I have on my feet right now. And as you guys can see, the fit, the sizing, the length, the width, everything is the same again keep in mind this is not a women's fit shoe it's just a women's colorway the shape and construction is no different at all so if you want to go from a men's model to a women's model with nike at least what you do is go up one and a half sizes so like i said i normally wear a 9 us in the men's version and i wear a 10 and a half us for the equivalent size in the women's variation as far as how these things fit and feel on feet they feel just like a regular pair of Superfly 4s as they should. So you get a flying it upper that's relatively flexible from right out of the box. The biggest thing you're gonna notice with any of the mid-cut models from Nike is the heel area, which depending on if you've worn something like this before will feel a little bit unusual, a little bit stiff. But as long as you break these things in nice and slow, you wear them around your house, go through some light training sessions, and just really take it easy for the first couple of hours. You shouldn't have too many issues with discomfort, but if you wear them straight into a game, straight into a shooting session, that's where you're gonna run into some problems. So really just take your time with the break-in process. Don't wear them 100% until you are 100% confident that they fit you well and you're comfortable to wear them for two hours or so. So just keep that in mind with the break-in process for any of the mid-cut models from Nike, not just the Superfly 4. As far as width is concerned, it's a tighter fitting shoe, so if you have really wide feet, probably not the best option. And width-wise, they aren't really gonna stretch much at all. The way they fit from right out of the box is the way they're gonna fit for their entire lifespan. As far as sizing is concerned, like I mentioned, uh, they go, uh, basically the conversion is one and a half sizes up, so just keep that in mind if you are interested in any of the women's colorways, um, whether it be the Superfly, the Magista, the Tiempo, or the Hypervenom, all the same sizing conversions apply to all four of the different silos. And that's pretty much it, guys. They feel like regular Superfly 4s. You just have to make sure you get the right size if you're interested in any of the women's colorways. All right, guys, that is it for my review of the latest 2016 women's colorway of the Mercurial Superfly 4 from Nike. If you guys are interested in more info on this shoe, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find the high quality images of this exact pair. Let me give you a better idea as to how they actually do look in person, as well as buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes, where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $275 retail price. So again, if you're interested in a pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. If you have any questions at all regarding the Superfly 4, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.